Hello everyone, in this video I'll show you how I install a runout sensor. I'm sure many of you have run into the situation where you are printing a really big job or maybe even not so big a job and you've run out of filament either in the middle or near the end of the print having to throw that entire print out. And it'd be really great if your printer could warn you that this has happened so you can go up and switch filament and here we'll install a runout sensor which will do exactly that. My initial plan was to build a runout sensor using a micro switch, but I was looking around online, I found this really nice device from Triangle Lab, and it's got a really nice micro switch, kind of large. It's got a roller on that micro switch, which is super nice. And you can see here when you insert the filament, it just moves in nicely friction free and it clicks as it should. In addition, it's got these two sockets. You'll most likely only use one, but if you've got an IDEX or you're using Enraged Rabbit, you can daisy chain these, which is really kind of fantastic. And anytime anyone in the chain sets, your printer will pause and warn you. It came with a piece of PTFE tubing uh, to line the entrance for the filament. It came with two screws and two bolts to tighten this down or connect this, whatever mount you're going to set it to came with this plug, which I can't use on my spider, and it came with this cable um, that plugs in here into the device. And if you look closely, the ends are actually terminated, but in this video, I'm gonna have to trim these off and add connectors of my own so I can plug it into my spider. In addition, you'll need to come up with a mount, and I 3D printed this one I found online. There are many others. You'll just have to find one that fits your printer. And I'll have the link to this one in the details of this video, or at least at the top of the video. As you can see, this was designed to mount to 2020 extrusion. And on top of that, it mounts not flat, uh, but vertically. And so you'll have to put some heat set inserts here and this is how it will screw or attach. And then here's where it'll mount to the 2020 extrusion. So it should look something like this when it's mounted. And the opening here is kind of nice. Of course, it saves plastic, but more importantly, it allows you to see the LEDs when they light up. In addition to the heat set inserts and the screws, in my case, I need a new plug that I need to install on the cable for the spider controller as well as the terminators. So first insert the heat set inserts. And when bolting to the mount, make sure you pay attention to the arrow here which shows you the direction of the filament flow through the switch because you want to make sure you're mounting this uh, in the correct direction so when it's on your printer the filament goes through easy and doesn't catch on the micro switch and so here it's pretty simple i'm just bolting it down you'll have to choose whatever bolts fit best with the mount that you've chosen and again in my case the bolts that came with it were just simply too long so I went for these they were much shorter those of you with a Vorin probably recognize this filament guide. So all I'm gonna do here is remove it so I can replace it. After trying to test fit it, it was really too tight to get on the 2020 rail. So as you can see here, I used a file, <laughs> a really old file, and uh, cleaned it up a little bit uh, so it would fit easier. Here you can see the two T-nuts I used uh, to mount this. And then simply insert it into the extrusion in the center trough push down firmly but I'm sure by now you're all experts in installing with t-nuts And once that's tight, firm, you don't see it moving substantially anymore, we will insert the tubing. I trimmed a small length of the PTFE tubing that came in the package, just enough to fit in the other side 
to make sure filament uh, is sliding really nicely and it doesn't wear away the plastic housing here. You may need to be careful here or you may need to wrap, I don't know, some tape or something on these because it turns out they fit kind of loose. And so a couple of times when I fed filament through, one side or the other would pop off. So you might want to do something to make it a little tighter. So now it's time for the wiring. On my Spider MCU, I have the X minus and Y minus end stops free. So I'm going to use the Y minus. It's going to be the one easiest to plug in due to the cabling mess. You, of course, will have to check your MCU to see what you have available. I'm using the cable that Triangle Lab sent for the runout switch. Here you can see red is three to five volts, yellow or blue is signal, and black is ground. And of course, I need to match those up to the power that comes out of my MCU on that Y minus end stop. So in uh, the direction of these sockets, X is red, which is the power, the plus five volt line. Uh, the center is black, which is the ground, and the signal is the leftmost. And so that's how I need to re-terminate the end, the other end of the cable. The other critical piece here is uh, Y minus is labeled PB13, and we're going to need that for our script later. So I'll spare you the exercise of watching me build this connector, uh, but this is uh, the finished connector and as all i'm going to do here is simply plug this in and notice in my case blue is the signal was all the way to the left and red which was the positive right and black was in the center so when power is turned on here you can see it's blinking red because there's no filament the switch is set and also notice the green led there as well which lets you know it's on and here I insert a little piece of filament, the red light stops blinking. So you've got a nice uh, visual clue as to the status and the switch is working, just in case you might have some issues trying to figure out what's wrong. So next I load the filament, and which <laughs> you should know how to do. <laughs> I'm not going to show you how to do that. So I found this G-code macro at the Voron user's site. And this is a macro specifically for runout detection. However, after looking at it, I felt I needed to make some changes. In the details of the video, I did post a link to this original document in GitHub. So to create a modified macro, in this case, I'm using fluid. You can use mainsail or whatever it is you choose. Here I hit the plus, add a file, and I am going to type in runout.cfg and so here by mistake I end up hitting save without adding the .cfg on the end so is all you've got to do is go right click on it and in this case I'm selecting rename and I'm going to call it again runout.cfg which was my original intention and hit save so I copy and pasted modified the text and I tested this as well and here I'm just going to step through the file to show you what everything means and some of the changes that I made. The first is declaring to Clipper that we simply have a filament switch sensor and I called it runout sensor. If you remember the PB13 uh, that was the socket I was using for the end stop minus Y, notice I have an explanation point, uh, uh, explanation point here that means not PB13, or rather take the opposite of the value that you're receiving. And then there's a pause on runout. This is a standard feature of a runout, runout switch for Clipper. Uh, I don't want it to pause yet, so it's set to false. However, I do want it to run G code during the runout, which is M600, which is what's defined here a little bit later in the file. And here you can see where I declare G code macro M600. And then uh, the variable for park X. Uh, what we're doing here is identifying the position of where we want the print head to be so we can change the filament. Once I have a 350 millimeter bed, and so I simply took half of it, which is 175. Depending on the size of your bed, you need to use the appropriate value here, or frankly, wherever it is you want it to appear above the bed 
And here I'm simply adding a comment with a pound sign to remind myself and to remind anyone else, because again, I'll be posting this in the details of this video. Um, park Y is a variable here, and it's at 10, which means the Y is almost to the very front of the plate. The Z lift, let's lift the head up 50, and the velocity is 60, and the variable retract, I have a half, you'll probably want to do one. I have a bit of a standing issue the last month or so, which I think I just fixed today, um, where if I do big retracts, I get into trouble. But if you're a direct drive, you don't want to do much more than about one or so anyway. Here, save G code state means save the current state of the printer so we can restore it. And here I have pause base, and this is a little bit odd. Fluid redefines pause, and it moves the print head all the way to the far back right corner, which I don't want. As it redefines it, it actually renames the existing pause to pause base. So I don't want the redefined, I want the pre-existing pause, and so I entered in here pause base. Mainsail may do something similar. I don't know, I'm not working with it right now. Um, if you really are concerned, I could go in and take a look at some point in time. Um, but by default, you'll probably just want pause there. Now here where I'm setting, um, I'm generating calculations for the values I put above. And so the TH equals printer tool head simply gets me all the data that is set in the tool head. And here you can see park X, park Y, park Z and park feed rate where we're doing calculations that I simply copied from GitHub. So here we do a G91. So here we're retracting by the value that we stored in the retract variable. And here we're actually making a move to the X, Y, Z using the calculated feed rate. And here we're simply placing a message on the screen telling the user it's time to load filament. And then once this is done and the user hits resume, we can hit restore G code state, which returns all the values and moves the motors back to where they were. So next, after you hit save and close, you need to go to your printer.cfg file. And in this file, we're going to include runout.cfg and square brackets, not curly braces. And then you need to scroll down in the file or search and, and look for an instance where you might have pause resume defined in the file. Clipper will go nuts if you have this in here. A very serious error. It won't even want to restart. I learned the hard way. So if you have this here, comment this out because it seems to conflict just like so. And then once you're done, hit save and restart. And then head over to your tune page or wherever it is where you can go and take a look and see what the different end stop switches are doing. And so here I've got filament in the runout sensor and you see it appears here as green, which is exactly what we want. And then I need to go and pull out the filament and, and we should see it switch to orange, meaning we have a problem, we're out of filament. We know the runout switch, the micro switch switch within the runout switch is working and it's connected properly. So now the real test. Here I'm starting a print and pretty simple. And I'm going to go now and cut the filament. And here I'm just gonna use a pair of side cutters. Again, this is while the printer's printing. I only had one hand here because the other hand was dealing with a camera. You most definitely will wanna hold, hold on to that filament when you cut it so what happened to my filament doesn't happen to you. But anyway, here you can see the filament being used and now the red light blinking, the switch is set. We have a problem. Excuse the wires on the print head. I was solving another problem and I failed to put the cover on. 
but here you can see the print head moved to where we told it to move. It's waiting for us to change the filament. Here on the display, you can see the text, refill please. This is not ideal because it seems to stay there forever, but hopefully we'll get that solved one day. Since this is a direct drive extruder, I had to pull a length of filament out. And again, this is definitely an area of an improvement, but here I'm placing the filament back in and here through the standard interface telling the extruder, extruder <laughs> to extrude material so we can make sure all is well here. Notice the mess I've got here on the bottom. Uh, if you have a, a brush, a nozzle cleaner installed, you can actually run that command right now. You can simply do this from your fluid or mainsail interface. And here it gets a little scrubbing. I've tried to add this to the macro and I've had a lot of difficulty. I can't seem to make it work. If any of you have figured out how to do this, by all means, please post how it's done in the comments. And here the print starts. And the way it starts, I simply type in resume. And you should have this effect. And the print should start off exactly where it left off. And that's it. Everyone, thank you very much for watching. And please click subscribe. Thank you.